Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to day 64 of uh, Onshake. We are going to build a compound gear here using the gear spur gear feature script. So let's get started on it. So I'm going to go ahead and hop over to a new part studio and look at uh, the toolbar at the top. It's got this little plus icon. Now this little plus icon allows you to add custom features or commands that other people in the Onshake community have created. And on one of the feature script examples is a spur gear feature script. Now I already have it selected, which is why this little spur gear icon pops up. And so what I'm going to do then is after you have this little spur gear on there because you selected it, if you click on it, it will make the spur gear for you, which I find super fun. There are a bunch of features in here you're welcome to kind of do a deep dive with. However, I'm going to stick to a pretty simple one and we're going to build a compound gear system. So the first one, we're going to do 20 teeth and give it a diametrical pitch of one. <laughs> Excuse me. And so what I'll do is I'll create my first gear. It gives it a diameter of one. Now that would be the diameter here is halfway between the tooth edge and the tooth inside radius or inner diameter. So it's that one inch between. And notice that the module comes out to be 0 0.05. So when we create our next gear, we want it to have a module of 0 0.05. Okay? For the next gear I'm going to make, and that is going to be a 40 tooth gear. And we want that module to be 0 0.05. And so what it'll do for me then is it'll automatically throw it at a certain diameter. To where the module is the same. So as long as your modules are the same between two gears, they will have, they will be able to mesh. Now you're welcome to kind of do a deep dive and look through all these other uh, other ones. Helical is probably one that interests me really well because helical gears tend to work a little bit better than just spur gears. But with the green check mark, we look good. One thing I'm gonna go back and do is, is do a center bore. Let's do a, a quarter inch center bore on both of those gears. So 0.25, that looks good. All right, let's go ahead and make our working planes inactive. They, they, they don't just get in our way. And let's make some edits to where we're able to uh, use these gears together as a compound gear system. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Transform. Transform allows me to take this 20 tooth gear and translate it in some direction, and I want these gears to be stacked onto each other. Now, I've already kind of done this beforehand, so I know it's going to be the thickness of our gears. Oh, that's 0 0.2, 0 0.2925. And that looks good. From here, what we can do is we can use the Boolean operation. Boolean, I just think that's just a fun word. We can use Boolean, and that will create our two gears to be made out of the same, or to be made into the same part. So let's rename this, and we'll just call this combo gear. Looks good. If we want to, we can go ahead and just change the face of it. So let's give it properties, not properties. Let's close out of there. Right click, edit appearance, and let's give it like kind of a metal color. Looks good. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our axles that are going to kind of sit through uh, our gears are going to sit through. So what I'm going to do is that each of them are going to have the same diameter as uh, the axle or the center bore we put through the gears. One thing I don't think I mentioned is that what is the distance between these two gears are going to be? Well, the first thing is, is that the distance between these two axles is the diameter of each gear. So my 20 tooth gear has a diameter of one. My 40 tooth gear has a diameter of two. 
So if I add those those up, that gives me uh, both diameters of three. However, we're looking at radius, so we're going to take that three and divide by two. And this is that perfect distance between for those axles to sit on. As far as the rest of this plate, you can kind of do whatever you want. Make it nice and pretty. And I'm going to just go ahead and uh, add in here. And that way it's nice and symmetrical. It looks good. I'm going to take our combination gear, make it inactive. Let's go ahead and extrude all of Sketch 1. And let's go with a distance of, let's just do an eighth of an inch for now. We might do an edits to it later. Looks good. And we're going to make that sketch active again. And we're going to extrude these two parts out. Do a flip on that axis. And do a depth of, let's do two inches for now. Might be a little bit overkill, but that's okay. So we've got our combination gear made. We got our axle stands made, but since they're both that gray color, let's add that appearance. Let's give it a nice yellow color. Looks good. All right, now we're ready to do an assembly. So let's click plus, let's create assembly. And let's pull those pieces in. Part Studio 2 looks good. Here's what I'm not gonna recommend. I'm not going to recommend you do linear pattern for your your gears and your revolutes and your ratios. That tends not to work because those pieces are linked in a way you don't want them to be. I couldn't quite get a way to, to replicate for, to work in a way that also does exactly what we want it to. So unless you're able to find a different way, we're going to have to go a little bit of a tedious route with these. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack these. I'm going to keep bringing in combination gears in such an order on how I'm going to put them on the axles. That way when I pull them in, they're in the order, so one, two, three, four, five, six, that they're also going to go on this, this stand right here. So first, one, first thing first is let's fix our axles, make sure they don't move at all. And then let's start to do our revolutes. So our first things first, this gear's gonna go through and have a revolute. Click play. Oh, I clicked on the same mate twice. Don't, don't work like that. No, I'm just not going to like it. This is what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to move this back just a hair. That way. There we go. That way I'm able to pick. Now, here's my thing. I don't know if this is my computer or if this is just kind of how the animation preview procedure looks. But if we look here... Notice how it looks like the front gear is rotating at a different speed. And that has to deal with how those calculations are made. It still is correct. So if I, if I were to look at this first revolute right here, and if I were to pull this, see how it's a little bit laggy? I don't know if that's my computer or, uh, or something else, kind of like limitation of on shape. But I don't know if I just animate just that joint. It looks as expected. I think it's been against kind of like it looks too jumpy. And so what it looks like if it's spinning opposite directions, it's actually one spinning faster than my computer or the browser wants to keep up. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a little bit of montage mode, and I'm going to uh, put the rest of my mates in in the order we have the gears here. Okay. So let's be back. I'll be back here in a few seconds uh, to walk through the next part. Welcome back. What we're going to do is we now have our revolutes in the way that we need them. 
uh, we just need to put in our gear relations. Now, when I talked about earlier in the video about putting them in the order that you want them to go, that is helpful when you do your gear revolution, your gear mates, because your revolutions are put in order as well. So the first one to the second one, what kind of relationship is that going to be? Well, is the one on the left rotates one, one on the right is going to rotate twice, or it's a two to one ratio, so I type in two. What we can then do is uh, just to see if the directions are going to be correct, and it looks like not. So let's reverse that direction. Okay, now that looks good. What we're going to do now is we need to edit that mate. So I'm going to go to Revolut 1. The first mate we did in that gear relationship and move it. We're going to rotate it just a few degrees. Three, four. Four's almost there. So let's do five. It looks like my magical number is actually going to be 4.5. Well, let me put 4.5 in there. That looks great. Okay. So now when I rotate this first piece, everything looks fantastic. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make that first gear now inactive. So that way it's not my way when I'm doing the rest of my gear relations. So relation one to two is done. So now we're going to do two to three. That ratio is going to be a two ratio again. Don't know if we need to reverse directions or not. So I'm going to hit OK. And see, what I've done is that my working planes are different than the first one. It just happens. And so as long as we check it, then I'll help us figure out if we need to reverse directions. I do need to make changes to that mate, though. So we're going to edit that mate. We're going to move it just about oh, 4.5 is our magical number, right? <clears throat> and that looks good. I wonder if, and I really didn't check it, but yes, it does affect that. Ooh, doesn't look good. I don't like it. Though. Let's go back, and I'm going to undo. And undo the point where we just had that gear relation in there. And I'm going to edit Revolute 3 instead. Instead of the second one, I'm going to uh, edit the third one. Let's do 4.5 degrees as well. No, nope, that's not going to be a good number. Let's try 9. Yeah, that looks good. So here's what I just figured out. Is that when you are working through your gear relations, you don't want to change anything that has already been solved. So see how we did the first and the second one? That looks good. We'll take the first gear away. Now the second and third one looks good. So when we put in our third and fourth gear, we only want to edit the mates on the fourth gear, not the third gear. So let's do that. Let's do gear relation between the third and fourth. That's a gear relate ratio of two again. Let's give it a quick test. We don't need to reverse the direction, but we do need to edit that mate. So we'll right click edit, we'll hit move, we'll do nine degrees. <clears throat> Here's how I knew it was nine. Four and a half worked earlier, but now since we're doing it, the other gears moving, the smaller gear, it needs to rotate more, twice as much. So four and a half times two is nine. That's where I got nine from. Just the physics teacher things. All right. That looks good. Let's just keep on going. I was probably thinking about going in like a little montage mode, but instead I'm just gonna talk and we're just gonna keep going. So we got one to two, two to three, three to four. Now we're gonna do four to five. E ratio is two again, click okay. That looks good. So let's go ahead and edit. Move nine degrees. Boom, looks beautiful. Four is gone. We got our last one, and that's going to be gear relation between five and six. If 
5 and 6. Ratio is 2. Don't need reverse direction, but we do need to edit that mate. Move 9 degrees. Looks all good. Let's bring everything back in. We are there, folks. We made it. So let's hit right click. Let's hit animate. Now I'm going to specifically animate the last gear because if we animate the first gear, my computer is going to freak out. So we animate the last gear. Do things look like they're working as expected? And that answer is yes. What happens if we animate this first gear? It's going to look like it doesn't work. So you see how this middle gear, it looks like it's spinning at a slower speed. Well, here's the issue. I don't know if it's the visuals of the graphics or if how the computation works, but what is being shown is the different steps or how often the program runs. So it doesn't run a full revolution. It actually runs steps of that revolution. But if we bump those steps up, like, the max that's allowed, and then click play. It will do more calculations per rotation, or it's per degree in that rotation, and then it looks like it works better. Okay, so that's what I just found out is that uh, I don't know if it's a limitation of my computer or how on shape works, but in either case, that's how you get around that situation. All right, guys, we're going to do our next video is going to how to take this and make a box or put it in a box. That way we have a compound gear box uh, that hopefully has a crankshaft and we can turn it and then see some interesting gear interactions. All right, that's it, guys. You've been awesome. Stay awesome. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.